Konnichiwa everyone, today we've got a very simple project for you and what we're going to do today is go over setting up the hoop on a Japanese chisel. We may go over some other things about setting up a Japanese chisel in the future but this is just what I wanted to start with today. Now in case you didn't know, Japanese chisels when you buy them they do not come set up and ready to use straight from the maker. You will have to do some work on your own and that's kind of cool because it lets you kind of set it up the way you prefer. I just picked this one up off the flea bay and the nice thing about this, it's a really decent blade and it's got a good euro on it. However, the hoop is, uh, yeah, I don't really like this particular setup. Whenever you use a chisel like this, it just kind of feels mushy. The way I prefer to set mine up is a little bit more like this. As you can see, it's a much shorter mushroom on the wood here. Here's another example of the way I kind of like to set them up. Just a little bit thin ring around the layer right there, just kind of mushroomed over. And this is just my personal preference. Like I said, this is not the ultimate way to do this. There are different ways to do it, I'm sure, but this is a method that's worked for me, so take from it what you will. Everyone's got a different preference too, so if you prefer to have more wood out behind the hoop on your Japanese chisels, that is perfectly fine. I just prefer not to because I feel like it makes it feel kind of mushy and squishy in my hands. Now the first order of business is to get the hoop off of these, and this can sometimes be a little bit tough because sometimes they're on there really, really well. All I'm going to do in this case is I'm just going to saw off a little tiny portion of this back piece here making certain to not saw into the hoop itself because that will hurt your saw. Now we can remove this guy. I've gotten rid of that mushroom there. And the way I do this is twofold. If it's on there extremely tight, you may not be able to use a wooden hammer, but to avoid scarring it up and marring it up, I usually try to knock it off with a wood hammer first. Generally, you just want to have it in a place so that when it pops off, it's not going to go smacking into someone's foot or it's not going to go flying into someone's eye. These things can come off with a vengeance, so be forewarned of that. So you're just going to take some gentle taps. Be very careful not to hit your hand. And work around the edge of the chisel like so. I'm going to do this from the side so you can maybe see it a little bit better. There we go. All right, so instead of flying off, this one decided to be a little bit more cooperative. And rip, come on. Yeah, not quite. Aha. Uh -huh. Before we go any further, we're going to do some modifications to this guy. Take yourself a little file, and what you want to do is you just want to make sure that there's no inside burrs going on in there. As you can see, there's actually a little tiny edge right there. I just want to knock off that very carefully. All you're really trying to do with this is just create a tapered hoop so that you don't dig into the wood. You just want it to be kind of set on there with friction, so the more tapered you can make it, the better off you'll be. All right, so once your hoop is done and you've got the edges nice and tapered off, you can see the problem that we had last time with whoever did this beforehand was that they actually had the hoop really sharp, and so when they hammered it on, it created this little ledge here. And so what we're going to do is we're going to remove that. Now you can use a chisel for this. However, I have found that using a chisel just for me doesn't really work that well because I tend to take off way too much material at a time. And I can control a knife far better in my personal experience, but that's just me. Everyone's got their own preference. This is just the way I do it. All right, so as you can see here, we have eliminated the ledge that was left previously. Got some marks there still, but that's okay. The way you check to make sure it's still round is you can do a test fit, but you should spin it in your hands. And if you see any lumps pop up, then that's a high spot, and that's where you should definitely do some more work. Now, one thing I'm going to do on this, this does have some lacquer finish on it. I am just going to go ahead and scrape that off because it feels very tacky in the hand. And that's, uh, yeah, that's, that's no bueno. You have about three 30 seconds or so of wood. You can go a little bit more than that if you want. I don't recommend going too far. And so one of the final steps we are going to perform on this guy is we are going to do some kigoroshi. If you don't know what kigoroshi is, you're going to take a hammer. What we're going to do is we're going to take our said hammer and we are going to compress the fibers on this handle so that we can get a better fit on this hoop. The way I do this, you simply take your hoop, take your hammer, and you tap all the way around. Do this in the middle of the day too so you don't wake up your neighbors.
All right, after that's done, we're gonna take our hoop and we're gonna tap it on there. And the way I do this is very, very carefully. You don't wanna destroy your thumb. Hold it flat on one side and then tap. Flip it around to the other side and tap it on there until you get a nice tight fit. So once you have compressed the wood fibers and smashed the hoop home, you should not see any little chips out on the edge on the underside from where the hoop has dug in. As you can see, take yourself a small cup of water, take the end of the chisel and soak it in the water for about three to five minutes or so. The reason you do that is because when you did the Kigoroshi earlier, you're compressing those wood fibers down so the wood will shrink this way. Once you get it wet, it will expand back up and will kind of lock the hoop in place. All right, so five minutes later, the wood has soaked up a good bit of that water. And now the absolute final step in your hoop setup, after you shake out some of this excess water, take yourself a nice sturdy encouragement device and we're gonna mushroom over this edge here just ever so slightly. And yeah, just like that. Now that wood's gonna be a lot softer from having been soaked in water than it would be before. Now you'll notice I'm not really striking the middle here, I'm actually just kind of striking this edge just to get that mushroom to start to form on that. And we're just going to work our way around and just slowly but surely spread that wood out to kind of lock that hoop in place. All right, after some work, you should have a nice little dome shape there that should not move at all. You want that to be rock solid. So yeah, that is essentially the method that you use to set up your Japanese chisel hoop. It's really not that complicated. It doesn't take a lot of time. It really doesn't even take a lot of work. To give you kind of an idea of what some of my other chisels look like, you can kind of see the consistency. And this is all the Japanese chisels that I've got. I've actually accumulated a couple extra, which is kind of nice. Each one should look fairly the same depending on your work style and what you prefer to do. There is no perfect way to set up any tool. Like I said before, it's all about what works for you and what works for your situation. As you work and as you strike the back of this, it'll continue to kind of mushroom that over and you know, it'll just work better and better as you get better and better using it. So anyway, thanks for watching guys. Hope you enjoyed that. If you like stuff like this, make sure to check out my Patreon down below to help me make videos like this. As always, have an awesome day. Arigato gozaimasu. Sayonara.